So we want to talk about, what do we want to talk about? We want to talk about synthetic humans. That's what we want to talk about, synthetic humans. Just, you know, just as a side note, I've been talking about a lot of alternative subjects, exotic subjects over the years, over the last 15, 16 years. And like, if you want to completely destroy your life, if you want to destroy your career, your friends, every personal aspect of your life, income, talk about aliens. <laughs> I know, from experience. I, I, I speak, a lot of the stuff I speak, I speak from experience. When I talk about things, I have experience, I've done the research. And uh, one thing I can say, if you talk about alien, especially if, you know, 16 years ago, I was talking about extraterrestrials. And I got severely, critically attacked and abused. And, you know, a few years ago, the U.S. Navy comes out and says, we're seeing ships, we got them on radar, we got video, they're advanced crafts that do not belong in any uh, arsenal. Okay, a few years ago. So I'm ahead of the game. Uh, about 10 years ago, in 2010, I started making videos uh, about androids. I call them androids because they're kind of, they were synthetic. They were artificial people. <laughs> now there's another way, another way to just, how to destroy your life. Talk about stuff that is completely off, out, outside of our thinking, which is fantasy. And then and, and people start to think this guy has, there's something wrong with him. Well, there is something wrong because I'm outside the, I'm outside the box. I'm outside the box. But the, I was right about the extraterrestrials. It's, there's whistleblowers now, there's testimonials, there's movies, there's books. There's the U.S. Navy, right? Government whistleblowers. It's all, right? 15 years later, 15 years later, I have been validated to some extent. There's more to go. I don't know how far we'll get. But I've already just, my, my life's already been destroyed. So I can't fix it. But I was right, right? I've, and, I, and I was coming, I was coming from a place with no information, no support, right? Just people thought I just made it all up. I didn't make it up, it's a fact. It's just outside the box, it's so far. So there's the box. And when you go outside the box, people call you names. When you go farther outside the box, they call you crazy. When the people calling you crazy, you're way outside the box. And, you know, I understand. I, I'm not alone, right? I understand, A. A, I understand, right? I understand. But for some of us, it's just something we have to talk about, right? It's like the writer, the, the artist, the painter has to paint. It doesn't matter, you don't like the paint. Picasso, Picasso was painting outside the lines. <laughs> you ever see Picasso painting? The eyeballs up here, the other eyeballs down here, the mouth is over here. In any modern interpretation, the guy's a lunatic, like he's drunk. They would say, Picasso, stop drinking. Don't drink so much, Picasso. And you say, I'm an artist, I'm a painter. I bet you they called him a lot of names, right? And now 
uh, Picasso's painting sells for a hundred million dollars. So it's the same thing with the synthetic humans. The androids among us, that was very specific intentional work. That there are these synthetic humans living alongside of us. Let's just refresh. What is this, a synthetic human? A synthetic human, because we're dealing with DNA, right? We're dealing with DNA. Everybody has DNA. And DNA has been around for a very long time. We only discovered it in 1953. 1953. When we discover, discovered DNA, we weren't manipulating, we weren't editing. We are now editing DNA. We are doing a little bit of engineering. So what a synthetic human is, is if you took the DNA, the genome of a person and you constructed it in a computer, right? You programmed it, A-G-T-C, right? A-G-T-C, and you programmed it in a computer, right? So it's, like a, it's like a computer software code. That's what they do, they code software millions and millions of lines of code let's say they, you you design dna in a computer and then you take the that code so in the computer the code is ones and zeros right the digital code is ones and zeros so dna is represented as ones and zeros so it's a two digit two numerical code, ones and zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, 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 one. And then you had some kind of biologic, biological converter. You ran it through a biological converter, this, this digital code, and you convert it to four letter DNA, right? So it's ones and zeros, this is DNA, but it's, written as ones and zeros and then you put it through a biological converter and it converts into four digit four letters a g c t and now you've got dna and then you print that dna you put that dna into a cell biological cell it could be any cell right human cell so you put that into the, the nucleus. Put the DNA, right? The chromosomes, whatever we want to, however this design, let's say it spits it out as chromosomes. You put the chromosomes inside the cell. So now it's now. Let's get this clear. So the, the DNA was designed in a computer, it's digital DNA, digital DNA converted into biological DNA. Put it in a cell, cell replicates, which is a cell, that's what they do, cell replicates. And this has been tested by science. This, this, this process has been tested by science and, and tested in 2000 and uh, 10 in the first synthetic cell where they designed a bacterial cell in a computer and they spit it out into digital into um, four digit dna and put it in a cell and the cell replicated into a bacterium now what we're dealing with is a much more advanced much larger scale process but you can see the process is not very complicated it's a science. So the DNA is digital DNA is designed in a computer. So that's where it becomes synthetic because it's artificial. It's, it's designed by a human or scientist, right? 
So you've got these designed people, right? It's designed DNA. And it looks just like any other person, but they have, you can put in certain, you can put in certain characteristics. You can add certain um, genetic codes. You can activate uh, certain genes, right? You can activate or deactivate certain genes, right? You can, right? So you, that's a, that's up to the the architect, right? So you have this person, this these cells, or this egg, and they can be. What happens? You put it into a body, a biological human. Now you got a synthetic cell, a synthetic person, a synthetic embryo. You got a little embryo, it's very small. You insert it into a person, any person, and then the baby grows, the baby's born, right? And it looks human. That is what I call a synthetic human. Now that is, that is the closest, most acceptable version. Another version would be that you take the cell and you grow it in a lab and you grow the human in a lab using machines that we don't have access to. And that would also be a synthetic human and then you clone, you can clone those people and you can have different variations, right? You can have, the thing is when you design in a computer, you have the genome and then you can change the race, right? You can, you can change the, the genes or the code that distinguishes the race. So you can have everything the same. I'm saying everything the same. I'm getting too bright here. You can have everything the same, but you could change the race. So you'd have you'd have you'd have uh, three different races, but they look they look very very close. They're similar. They have similar aspects, but they're different race. So you automatically your mind automatically thinks they're different. But they could share the, uh, the they could share a genome, and then they just change the temp they just change some of the characteristics. That's all DNA, but that's you know that's not something I I can do. I'm not a geneticist. I'm not a geneticist. But this is my understanding, because when I when I talk about when I started to say the androids, human androids, people thought. He's way outside the box. And so people don't understand. They start calling you names. But I want people to understand that there, this is a, it's an advanced science. And that people can be <clears throat> manufactured to some extent. But the science is not science we, it's not science in the conventional spectrum it's science that either other departments or other cultures have right and, and, and this is another argument because people think well we would know about it no you wouldn't because you don't have to know about it but there is the science there is the science of the dna genetics synthetic uh, synthetic genomics is a science so, and they are making, they have been making synthetic cells since 2010. So now <clears throat> we're getting into that spectrum, right? So remember about the, the other stuff, it took 15 years. So I started talking about these, I called them androids at the time, because we, if I said synthetic, A, I didn't understand it. <laughs> because I had to study. B, people wouldn't understand 
the distinction that they're very different from the biological specimen, which is the natural, right? You know, in, in the world we have, we have processed food, which is food, and then we have organic food, which is food. They're both food, right? They're both edible. But there's a distinction. This is organic and this is uh, processed or artificial or it was grown, right? The stuff now is grown with um, certain chemicals and fertilizers. So organic means there's none of that stuff and pro no, regularly grown fruits and vegetables are grown with chemicals, fertilizers, pesticides, uh, growth factors, right? So there's a distinction. We, we understand that in the food, in the food, we understand that. Natural and organic, uh, uh, natural, organic, and just the regular stuff. And then there's the processed stuff. What I'm, sa what I'm saying is that in the human world, there are natural organic humans and there are synthetic humans and the different the key difference because we can we can get it can get complicated it can get i don't want to get complicated the key difference is that the synthetic human was designed in a computer <laughs> that's the difference now i i don't have the computer but somebody there are advanced groups or races that have the this technology and it's because they're more advanced than the human race or an advanced group gave the technology to a secret group of scientists who have used their technology to do this so it can, it, then it gets in right now it gets into that how did you get it? How did it happen? But I don't want to get off topic. There is this science, there is this technology, and there are these people. And they look exactly like everybody else. But the difference is that they have advanced characteristics. Now, one of the things you might do one of the things you might do, get some sun here. One of the things you might do, here, let's go in here. One of the things you might do with uh, synthetic humans is you might give them some kind of communication channel, back door, like a back door communication channel, so that should you require their help, you can you can communicate right you can communicate with them a b so you can give them ideas you know go become a lawyer right you can say go become a lawyer and you just think the person will be like i think i should be a lawyer <laughs> you've heard of people hearing voices I think I've always wanted to be a lawyer, right? From the very beginning, when I was young, I always wanted to be a lawyer. Well, maybe there's a reason for it, right? So you can get them, you can kind of steer them, right? Because you might need them. You need them and you need a lawyer. I need a synthetic lawyer. I call up the lawyer. The, the, the other thing is on a more advanced scale, you can control the synthetic person because there's, there's a complementary technology to control. You can control the disposition, right? Or you can control the actions of a person. This is complementary technology. So they're not, it's not just one th We always like to think there's one thing and there's one answer and there's one maker, but there's a lot of things going on that are complementary. 
And so you have this, you have these people, and now you have this complementary technology that can communicate, that can control. So let's say I need somebody to play a certain political disposition. So we change their political views. Let's say I need somebody with a certain religious belief so we can get them religiously motivated. So if I need somebody to create a movement of some kind, so we create a movement of some kind. So we have this, we have this complementary setup that we can, that we can use in, in conjunction with the other stuff that's going on. Now, to, to, to most people, none of this exists. Except in, in a movie, in a movie, there might be this stuff about artificial humans, clones, right? There's a movie about clones and androids. But what I'm what I'm suggesting is that this has been, this is in the modern world, and has been around for a while. And so, what what can happen is, if you produce enough of these synthetic people and you control enough of them into the positions of power, it can become a situation where the leadership, the leadership and the owners and the billionaires all belong to this group, right? So imagine, imagine a situation where the decision makers, let's just call them decision makers, and they're all friends and they all, they're all connected to, through secret societies, which no one talks about, right? Th these people are all, they were all manufactured. Now, some of them are more synthetic than others, right? So remember, some, some of them can be grown in a lab Someone could be born through a human surrogate. Some of them could be cloned. There's different variations. So again, again, the, the issues I've always had with talking about this stuff is that we tend to think in, we, we only want to think in one scale. They're all synthetic, right? All aliens are evil. Like we always just want to, for whatever reason, right? Climate change, carbon, air. Eh. But there, there are variations. There's a, there's, there's a variation to the whole thing. Because you're dealing with environment. So if you, if a synthetic human is born from a surrogate, then if the person grows up on the east side or a person grows up in a in a wealthy household they're two different people right so there's automatically a variation and then those people will have their own experience in life and they'll and there's a, so there's a huge discrepancy between these people and they could be both synthetic right in in another case you might have someone born in made in a lab you could, but think about all the variation. I want people to think about the variations and I, I hope you don't get overwhelmed. But I wanna make sure that we don't simplify. I don't wanna simplify things just to say, hey, it's this, this. Think about, there's a synthetic person and the surrogate, right? Before it was a natural surrogate. Imagine the surrogate is synthetic. So you have a synthetic uh, embryo born of a synthetic surrogate. So now that that person is more synthetic than a synthetic embryo born of an organic or natural person, which would then the person would be kind of mixed, right? It would be like half and half because it would take it would take the the DNA from the mother and the father. And then the, who is the father? Is the father synthetic? Is the donor synthetic? 
or is it natural? So you can see the variation, right? In a pure, in a pure system, you have a synthetic embryo born of a synthetic process or mother surrogate, and then you got a fairly pure synthetic person, and they're distinctly different. They got heightened skills, heightened ability, uh, heightened characteristics, and they're at the top of their class. You can have, on the other scale, you can have the variation, right? Organic, organic surrogate, you got half, so they're partially synthetic. And imagine some of these people can be controlled. So what happens in a world, why would you, why would you make uh, a synthetic human? Right? Why build an electric car? We have electric cars. We have hybrid cars. We have gasoline cars. Why build an electric car? Because it's better. It's more fuel efficient, right? It's um, design simpler. It's got the self-driving, right? It's got fewer components. It's easier to manufacture. There's all these benefits. And so we, we're not at that level to understand the, the, the creation of people. That's an advanced science. And we're definitely not at that level to say, well, you know, some people are more synthetic than others. <laughs> but it, there are advantages to having leaders and decision makers who have more capability higher functionality, right? You, you, to run a nation, to run a corporation, you need somebody with skills and confidence. To run multiple corporations, you need somebody with skills, abilities to process all that kind of information, right? And that's what those types of people would be suitable for, is exceptional circumstances, such that You'd have a situation where we can have things done and we can grow as a society. The negative is, depending on who's, who's in charge of that process, you can have a world led by, you know, a very uh, dispassionate, right, amoral group. If a dispassionate, amoral group creates its cast of synthetic characters and they're in charge, then we go through kind of a dark age and we go through a lot of misery. Now, in, if, if we were in a situation where there's a group A creating good people and group B creating bad people, just for simplification, then you have this competition who's trying to run the world there's the bad and the good. And people, citizens, we have to kind of watch this, this, this battle. But imagine, so imagine why would you build a synthetic, why build a synthetic human? Because in terms of a global society, in terms of a space colony you need certain people characters who can lead who can make decisions who can break new ground in science in art in philosophy you need those thinkers and doers now, if you want to be that, that's great. If not, there's these other people. <laughs> so the, the, the technology, in my view, is necessary. But depending on who's in, who's in control, right? 
it, it, when you get into sports, anybody watches sports football, there's this team A and team B, and they both want to win. And there's fans for team A, and there's fans for team B. And team A might win a couple of championships, and then team, team B might win a couple of championships. And it will go on for many years. And there's, in other words, in other words, what I'm saying is there's no situation where only team A wins forever. Or, or team B or vice versa. There's always a situation where if everything is working right, there's team A and they're determined and there's team B and they're determined and one's going to win. And next year, another one might win or he might win again. But it's an ongoing competition, a battle. So imagine that kind of situation is in the science and imagine it's in the synthetic science. And imagine it's in, a, it's in a synthetic science that's beyond our ability to be aware of. It's outside of our perception. And it's only inside of our perception because I'm bringing it, I'm bringing it to you because I'm outside the box. So why build a synthetic human? Because because space colonies must develop and grow. And the types of people who can push the boundaries are exceptional people. And that's, that's to our benefit. On the other case, if there are destructive individuals, then those people we have to kind of we have to monitor. There are destructive. There are destructive people and there are constructive builders. So we support the builders, construction. We support the builders, we support the constructors, we support the optimists, and we keep the other people in check. And then we're gonna have a good future, right? at the end of the day after so many after so many years of this process going on we all share we all share the dna right <laughs> right if this if this process has been going on for 5000 years well what's the definition of, of an organic person